Over the years, I've wondered about many things that have happened in life. As people, we need to question some of these things that happen in our life in general. For example, why is W shaped like two V's instead of two U's? It's pronounced double U, so it should look like two U's put together, but it's shaped like two V's. Why did Michelle Obama ruin school lunches for kids? Baked chips? 65% less fat. Nigga, come on, no one wants that healthy ass shit. And the final question, why did Adobe get rid of Adobe Flash Player? I swear, this decision single-handedly altered life in a way we can never go back. And you may think I'm over-exaggerating, but look at the date it happened. December 31st, 2020. Exactly a day before the year of 2021. Known as one of the worst years in existence. There's no way this was just a coincidence. All kids from the 90s or 2000s grew up using Adobe Flash Player. The amount of memories I made from the games here is just absolutely astonishing. Fireboy and Water Girl was a personal favorite of mine. My childhood crushes as a kid go as the following. Kim Possible, one from Total Drama Island, and Water Girl. I think I popped my first ever boner after seeing Water Girl on my computer screen. I remember finishing my schoolwork in class and then hopping on cool math games shout out to cool math games man it would always load up this bad boy just to pass the time and the good thing is it was okay to play on school because it was on cool math games technically it's a puzzle you need to figure out mathematically how to move and shit i guess that's learning right the objective of the game was quite simple too move the characters solve the puzzles and try to make it to the end but let's be honest no one ever made it to the end shit was too long 32 fucking levels yeah miss me with that what made the game great too is you could play with a second person and it wasn't confusing to learn at all all you do was move and jump your grandmother who has never touched a computer in her life could probably play this game. It's kind of like playing the original Super Mario Bros and not knowing how to play it. Nigga, you just jump and hit blocks with your head. And if the person you're playing with was somehow stupid enough not to know how to play it, then just play by yourself. Oh yeah, you could also play by yourself as well. What's there to not like about this? If you thought niggas truly just weren't as smart as you, then you could go through it by solving everything single-handedly. That or you had no friends to play with. You know, not me. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I totally have friends to play with. Yeah, totally. Fancy Pants Adventure also hit different. This list is truly about to make me cry. When everyone thinks of Adobe Flash games, this man has to pop up. The concept of Fancy Pants was quite simple. Run as fast as you can, stomp any nigga out in your path, and complete the game. I swear, the animations in this game were so fucking fire too. Anything Fancy Pants did was just smooth as shit. The way he ran while his hair flowed through the air, the way he opened the door and hopped through it, even the way he stood still was hard. And he did all these acrobatic insane moves while being in a single pair of pants. Orange pants at that. Usually orange pants cannot hold any type of drip. Have you ever seen a nigga wearing orange pants in public? Exactly. But when it's Fancy Pants wearing orange pants, it's fucking trip. Super Smash Flash was also a great choice to me. Broke niggas who couldn't afford Super Smash Bros like me used to play. It was basically hood Super Smash Bros. But honestly, it was kind of better than the original Super Smash Bros. I swear, this game was ahead of its time and popularized the multiverse aspect. Because it didn't have to deal with copyright because it was an online internet game. They could add any person in that bitch they wanted to. From Nintendo characters like Mario or Link, to adding comic book characters like Spider-Man, to even adding fucking anime characters like Goku, Naruto, Luffy, Ichigo, and all of that. It just truly hit different. What made it great too is that you could have four players in that bitch. I remember playing with four of my friends and we all tried to play with one single keyboard, which was still one of the hardest things I've ever done today. Nothing in school has ever topped it. You had eight hands on one keyboard and the rage for this game was beyond different because it's not like you're playing your friends online. Or as a matter of fact, even in a controller like distance, you're all right next to each other on the same keyboard. So if that unhinged ass nigga in the group gets mad that you whooped their ass, they can start swinging on you with no problems. And I know a lot of people would complain saying it was too choppy or too loud. But at the same time, it was the only Smash game where you could have Luffy, SpongeBob, Crash Bandicoot, and Mario all fighting at the same time. The Papa Louie game franchise is not given enough credit either. This shit really taught me how to chef it up in the kitchen in all different types of ways. First off, we had Papa's Pizzeria, which is still one of the most iconic games to date, and for a reason. This game fucking slapped. They made a game that's a real job and shouldn't be fun. Fun. I was putting the pepperonis on those pizzas with the utmost highest of accuracy, cutting the pizzas precisely to ensure the customer wasn't upset, baking them to perfect while keeping the cheese golden brown and the crust crispy and it was all worth it in the end after seeing the customer's happy face they was always tipping me i was just a top tier employee but you cannot forget about the other classics in this franchise as well you had papa's freezeria papa's burgeria papa's wingeria papa's taco mia papa's freezeria and of course the hot dog -eria. you really missed out not naming it glizzeria a true hood classic franchise this game really taught you niggas how to work the jobs you're working right now as well papa's pizzeria nigga you work at domino's papa's freezeria nigga you work at cold stone Papa's Burgeria, nigga, you work at McDonald's. So thank Papa Louie for teaching you about your future job and how to work it as well. But there's one game in this list that I haven't mentioned that just absolutely tops them all. Something so traumatizing when kids simply see the image, they cower in fear. Not even God himself could challenge this game and condemn it straight to hell. Get ready to get PTSD in three, two, one. 
I don't care what anyone says. No matter what new gen horror game comes out, they can add as many new scary features into them. They still won't ever top the first time I played scary maze game and got jump scared by this bitch. I still have PTSD from the first day this happened to me. Whoever made this game needs to be put in prison for the amount of kids they traumatized. Even talking about it is just bringing bad memories back. Who thought it was a good idea to make this game? How could something be so simple yet so traumatizing? I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Let's just let's just move on. Balloons Tower defense needs no introduction. This game is transcended even being known as an Adobe Flash game. I was really out here making military lineups to destroy some fucking balloons, and I loved it. The amount of games this franchise has just proves how goaded it was. And your favorite monkey in this really said a lot about you. I used to love the OG one that looked like Superman. Bro shot lasers out his eyes like he was Homelander. What's there not to love about it? Shit would also get hectic real quick in the game. It would start off so slow with balloons coming out one at a time, and then end up looking like this. What the fuck is even going on here? But as long as you set up your formation right, you were good to go. Henry Stickman was by far one of my favorite Flash games as well. This man right here was a true menace in whatever he did. He always put himself in situations he really never needed to be in. Dealing the diamond, infiltrating the airship, escaping the prison, fleeing the compound. How the hell did he get into these predicaments? And there were always so many options of what you could do at each point in the story. I swear, this nigga was so stupid sometimes. Like the time he used a teleporter to escape prison, only to be teleported in a shooting range and get his head shot off. Or the time he tried to use a laser cutter to steal the diamond out the case, only to chop his fucking body in half. But all the choices you had in the game is what made it fun. You could escape in so many different ways that you would never ever think of. It was a true staple in making games interactive with the user. Something I still don't think is top to this day. No interactive game will reach the level that the Henry Stickman franchise has still reached to this day. Happy Wheels was also one of the goats in this era. And Happy Wheels made so many YouTubers careers. Half the biggest YouTubers now would be nothing without Happy Wheels. I feel like this game also got me used to seeing Gore at a young age. That and Happy Tree Friends. Yeah, we don't talk about Happy Tree Friends. I really had no business playing this game at 10 and watching these people's bodies getting ripped in half from the most gruesome things ever. But that's what made it fun and made me the man I am today. The amount of things you could do in this game was honestly just insane for the time. People were so creative in the levels they made for this game. I remember specifically playing the sword levels on this game and trying to speed run them or the ball throws and trying to beat the entire thing. Also the bottle runs and trying to complete those levels. There was just so much to do that I can't even go over it in this whole video. And now I know people like to talk about deadbeat dads in cartoons or animes, but y'all truly forgot about this nigga right here. The dad on the bike with this kid is the worst dad ever. The amount of times I would play this game and the kid died was wild. Child Protective Services was just non-existent in this universe. He was always flying out the car seat in some type of way. Why is he never strapped down correctly? And the dad would just keep moving after the fact like nothing happened. No emotions or anything on his face. But I hate to say it, it was kind of funny seeing that kid flying out the car seat. You're lying if you never laughed at this kid getting launched out the car seat at Mach 10. Living in this universe would just not be viable as a regular person. I'd rather live in Gotham than live in this universe. Because no matter what, you're going to die in some gruesome way. They didn't even care if it was a kid getting folded. No one was safe. Super Mario 63. Now I'm not sure how many people actually know about this game, but holy shit was this game amazing. It was sort of a bootleg Super Mario 64, but I honestly do not care what anyone says. This was way funner than any Mario game at the time. The fact that you could play this game without having to own a Nintendo device was great. Actual effort was put into the game's design as well. There was multiple worlds, different power-ups, they even added the foot device Mario wore back in the original games. All for free as long as you had a computer and Adobe Flash Player. I'm surprised they didn't get sued by Nintendo. The way Nintendo hands out lawsuits, I would think the creators would get like 10 life sentences. And the last game we absolutely cannot forget about. A classic game that only needs one word for an introduction. The most go-to cool math games game when you were in class and bored. The best time killer to this day, aka the game known as Run. Let's clap it up for this little alien nigga right here. Every single game in this franchise was an absolute banger. Before kids had Fortnite, before kids had Roblox, shit, even before kids had Minecraft, this was the absolute best boredom killer for the time. Something about running down the endless course while doing parkour was just so fun. A starry night in the background while running and trying to dodge the holes that would suck you into the vacuum of space hit different. It's just true nostalgia and gaming at its finest. I could sit through this game for hours and hours and be left alone. If I'm ever on my deathbed and the doctor tells me I only have one hour to live, well, you know what I'm doing for the last hour of my life. And the great thing, like I said, is that this was on cool math games. So I would be in school with the computer pretending to do some work when the teacher walked by, then switch the tab right back to cool math games and continue playing the game. Overall, I think we need to give Adobe Flash Player more credit for making our childhoods. Some of the best moments I've ever had in my life were because of Adobe Flash Player games. There's so many more games I didn't mention because this video would just go on for hours and hours. The sad thing too is that in the future, kids are really going to ask us, what is Adobe Flash Player? And it's going to be our quote unquote old head term when we talk about it. Kind of like when your parents talk about things that were popular in the past. Then you just look at them like, god damn you old. But I have a real bone to pick with Adobe. Why did you guys end Adobe Flash Player? It seriously still makes no sense to me. It's not like you were losing money from having it run. And even if you were losing some,
some money. That doesn't fucking matter. You know how much Adobe charges me a year just to edit my videos in Premiere Pro? $240 a year. That alone is probably the budget it takes to run Adobe Flash Player. But don't act like you did it because of budget issues. And they say it was also because of security issues. You think I care about that? Who cares if we need to sacrifice a couple of computers to keep it running? I'll gladly smoke in the pack of those computers to keep Adobe Flash running. But as a wise man once said, don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. And also as a wise man once said, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. As always, I love you guys consensually. And until next time, I'm out.